Welcome back. Let's check the headlines. Songbird update and India trading crypto. China may be in their Lehman Brothers moment right now, and it could be devastating. JP Morgan Chase and digital banking. <laughs> Famous respected trader weighs in on XRP status, security or commodity. We'll tell you. Ripple plans to settle or go the distance. I think they're going to go the distance. Compelling facts say that Ripple wins according to governing law. That is going to be one hell of a piece to look at. And what are the alternatives are losing? And I can tell you they are severe. How about XRP price? What in the world is going on? Well, roll that beautiful intro and we'll find out. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. Let's take a look at the market because we're at 94 cents. Woo! Currently falling like a manhole cover from the sky. The whole market is just up. Uh, <sighs> where we're at this morning 1.96 or yeah 1.959 actually for the crypto market cap and we are under two trillion dollars for the first time in weeks and looking here we're off by 8.30 percent ouch bitcoin at 44,000 plus ethereum at 3100 plus cardano at two dollars 11 cents xrp is at 93 cents and bleeding heavily and most of that is in the last 24 hours with 12.73 percent drop in the last 24. Let's take a look at the range right now because we're ranging between $1.786 on the upper end of the price range and $94.31 on the lower range for that is exactly where we are. So we are currently in a downfall because we current price is at the bottom range. So listen, we will hear from three different analysts here and we have talked about this that we could go as low as in the 76, 85 to 76 cent range and all the upper our price targets are still on point. They're referring this as a uh, C correction wave. So we're going to take a look at this and hear from them rather than me. You'll like it better. I do. I do. <laughs> Let's get into the news from JC Collins this morning. Shout out to you, my friend. Awesome. Things will move fast now. This is a reminder, which I covered over the weekend, but in case you didn't see it, Songbird trading on BitTrue starts September 27th. Now that is getting exciting, getting very exciting. Looking right here, Michael, Indian crypto investors have turned to peer-to-peer -to -peer platforms and groups on Telegram and WhatsApp to facilitate trades. But look at the percentages here. These platforms reportedly account for 60 to 80% of all transactions. Oh my lands. Now listen, I put this in here for two reasons. One, India has been like a bad tennis match watching them get straight with crypto. But now look what's going on. It is a boom in buying, and they're all deferring to peer-to-peer -to -peer platforms like Telegram and WhatsApp to do so. Now, this is important because I think this really is like one, I mean, glaring example of why central banks need a central bank digital currency, because you can't track all of this as much as you feel like you want to. But what you can do is have a digital currency that is tied to the, the local dollar, the fiat dollar, or the government dollar. And at some point, one of these people is going to want to take this transaction and turn it into cash. And when they do, that's where you catch them with the on and off ramp. And I believe that's the ultimate end goal. Now, this is a reminder from Hall of Famer Michael here, who tells us about Evergrande's debt crisis is wreaking havoc on Hong Kong's stock market. Listen, this is being referred to as the Lehman Brother moment in China. And just to give you an idea, this conglomerate has lost 84% off its stock price so far this year. That is a devastating blow to their economy. You have to wonder how much further is it going to affect their economy? And is this spillover because it's such a huge conglomerate like Lehman Brothers was as well? Are we going to see this spill over into other areas that are of their economy and it continue to downtrend? Then you have to start wondering, well, how about globally? How does this affect outside of their economy? you know, uh, regional economy. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. But not good, ladies and gentlemen. You have to wonder, when do we get our turn here in the States? 
We've heard many, many economists call for a 30, 40 percent or even more in a correction in the conventional stock market here. So we'll keep an eye on it. So looking here, America's largest bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, is all set to put a step in the U.K.'s emerging digital banking. As reported Financial Times, J.P. Morgan is looking to launch a digital-only bank in the U.K. Does anybody remember when J.B. Diamond was telling people, I will fire anyone working for me that is buying, selling, trading crypto? I'll fire them, right? That's what they call talk in their book, because the truth is, behind the scenes, J.P. Morgan was going out and buying as much Bitcoin as they wanted, and they knew when they talked about it and talked down about it on mainstream media that it would drive the price down. And that's not illegal. That's what they've been doing for decades upon decades. Now, this is Peter Brandt, who over the weekend apologized to XRP investors and holders because he said he had it wrong. He was a dinosaur in a new emerging market, I believe it was. But now he's saying that uh, he spent more four decades navigating commodity markets, and he still holds the view that XRP is an unregistered security. Well, that's where we start. But let me tell you, this is where we go next. Because I swung by the Fed over the weekend. Yeah, I was out there in Denver. Shout out to Spencer H and Mrs. H and the whole H family. And I was only there for the day, so I couldn't get in a visit with you guys. It was just an in and out trip because I had to swing by there and clear some things up for the Fed about XRP, the standard. They needed a little reminder that XRP goes all the way back and started with the Federal Reserve Faster Payments Task Force. And it's at this point, if you didn't know that and you're new to the space, it's a nice little reminder for you to go check that information out. And it's a nice little reminder for Peter Brandt, too. Because you could also go look up FinCEN and their 2015 decision where they call it a virtual currency. So that's just a little something from us to you. right? And there's even more to come because Ripple says they have no plans to settle, baby. With the SEC over XRP confident that Gensler will drop the lawsuit. Check this out. Ripple's legal team told Fox Business, and shout out to Charles Gasparino, who has been grabbing this story and just running and telling it. And I love it. He's crushing it. And I tell you, anything that they need to help facilitate information, I know I am willing to offer any of my time and services to help on the matter. I can tell you that. But it seems here that they have no plans to settle the lawsuit with the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission, says Charles Gasparino reported on Friday. Ripple's legal team tells Fox Business they have no plans to settle with the SEC over the lawsuit on XRP, confident they can show Gary Gensler in pursuing the case is picking winners and losers in the crypto business to the detriment of innovation and that's exactly right it goes on here to highlight you know what we know about the case so far but it also highlights from his testimony how he uh is pro innovation because he made a comment about you know uh do you support responsible innovation from cynthia loomis and he said oh my gosh yes i i mean it's brought us the lights in this room it's brought us the ability to have hybrid hearing with your fellow members i mean innovation is what supports access economic activity and gives us so much better opportunity Opportunities in life. He goes on to talk about Satoshi Nakamoto's innovation is real. It spurred the development of crypto assets and the underlying blockchain technology. You know, it's describing it as been and could continue to be the catalyst for change in fields of finance and money. Well, let's get clear on this. John Deaton shows us here governing law says Ripple will win. Check this out. Check this out. Shout out to John Deaton. He's a Hall of Famer right here. Cryptocurrencies are a lawful means of storing or transferring value and may fluctuate in value as any commodity would. In the abstract, an investment of money in a cryptocurrency utilized by members of a decentralized community connected via blockchain technology, which itself is administrated by this community of users rather than by a common enterprise, is not likely to be deemed a security under the familiar test laid out in the SEC, Howie. That's Judge Castle in the Telegram case, SDNY, the same division that the Judge uh, Torres and Netburn are in looking at the Ripple case. The security in this case is not simply the gram, which is little more than alphanumeric cryptographic sequence. How he refers to an investment contract, a security as a contract transaction or scheme. Using the term scheme in a descriptive, not a pejorative sense, the security was neither the Graham Purchase Agreement nor the Graham, but the entire 
entire scheme that compromised the grand purchase agreements and the accompanying understanding and the undertakings made by Telegram, Judge Castle, in the Telegram second opinion and order. Listen to this. When, we, when you read the above opinion and orders from Judge Castle, the same court as Judge Torres and Netburn, and then apply it to the decentralized nature of the XRP ledger, one very specific outcome comes to mind in the Ripple XRP case. XRP wins, baby. How about that one? And listen here. What are the alternatives? China is advancing in a very fast pace the implementation of their digital yuan. They are now set to become a part of China's digital currency with these different four cities that they're citing here. And you think of this for a moment. What are our alternatives on a global scale? That the U.S. dollar no longer be the global reserve currency and that the digital yuan become that? That does not a solution make for the world. And you won't find anybody but the leaders of China to say so. Or is it this? XRP gets its true value from all the money as a bridge currency between all central bank digital currencies, between all things of value that have been tokenized, digitized, and tokenized, even like supply chains and trade, right? Gold, oil, US dollar, Swiss franc, euro, it's all there. Silver, you name it. That's what this is about. And make no mistake about it. China is out front in this race looking to be the next global reserve currency. However, we know that they're having a huge collapse right now because they're having their Lehman Brothers moment. So at the end of the day, I really do believe it is about the Federal Reserve Faster Payments Task Force, right? It is about this. It is about the fact that this is where it started for XRP. And why was that? Because the Fed knew they needed a solution. It's not just about faster payments, which is a key point because faster settlement, and we haven't had instant settlement up until this time in the future of mankind, in the history of mankind. And the reality for me is, is that that's what this is about because you need the velocity of money in a way that we've never experienced it before. If you can bring that part to the formula to reignite the global economy, not just the U.S. economy, but the global economy, that bridge currency, XRP, can in fact stop the spillover shocks of something like the Lehman Brothers moment with Evergrande in China from affecting the other surrounding nations that are tied with their economies to theirs. Ultimately, this is what it's about. And that's how important it is to get this right about whether XRP is a commodity or a security or a virtual currency, which would make it a commodity. And I do believe it's a virtual currency. Looking right here, Crypto Wizard says XRP daily technical outlook. XRP declined a bit, but due to XRP BTC, a further decline is possible due to an early weekly pullback from Bitcoin, but it will not change anything. As soon as XRP BTC finds its higher low and gets a bullish breakout, we will see the next bull run in XRP. Shout out to Crypto Wizard. And looking right here, Dark Defender says, we are proceeding as we expected within the same wave structure. Corrective wave is two is still in play. The supports were and are 95 cents and 83 cents for XRP. Corrective waves are always boring, but healthy. Wave three will be huge. They are aligning. These technical analysts are aligning, and so is Coins Kid. XRP holding the weekly 20 EMA at 94 cents at the moment of flash crash to the weekly 55 EMA at 74 cents, and a bounce would be nice. Watch the U.S. market opening. Dump before the pump. Red, green, red, ABC, wave two, they're all pointing to the same scenario. And that doesn't mean that it will guarantee to happen. But I tell you, and it's not financial advice from me or them or anyone else, but it gives me confidence that I know that we're still in a channel with the fluctuation of price and these pullbacks and what they see as wave two uh, as as a very healthy pullback. And as as, as we've heard Coin Kids say many times on this channel when we cover him, 
the deeper the pullback, the bigger the boom. So that's what we're waiting for. And that's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. It's good to be back home. I can tell you that. And I love it. We're going to be on top of it today. Watch out for the second video. It's going to be something. And we will catch all of you on the next one.